The 2021 NFL Draft is now officially open. <laughs> With Justin Fields he and Matt it. Jones on the board, guess who just traded in? The Chicago Bears just traded wow. in to pick number 11. They are on the clock. That's got to be quarterback. There's no other way. That has to be a quarterback. And the which question one is, is it? Who is it? Is it Justin Fields? Is it Mac Jones? Andy Dalton is the placeholder there right now. To me, Justin Fields, you get a lot more upside of what he can do. Uh, but you've got a similar style with Mac Jones and what they're familiar with. All right, Bears fans, you're on the clock, and it looks like a quarterback's coming because your team just coughed up a one and a four next year, along with a five on Saturday, to move up nine spots and choose who. All right, Joel, I'm putting you on the clock. Oh. Bears coming up. Just like DJ said, this has got to be for a quarterback. Yeah. It's a huge need. They've been looking to fill this spot since they drafted Mitch Trubisky. So. Which one of these guys are going to be? I, I would go with Justin Fields. Uh, Justin Fields right now is the best quarterback available for me. This guy is tough. He's clearly athletic. He's very competitive, and he's accurate down the field. One of the knocks on Justin Fields was that he held the ball too long. What they failed to realize is that they were running a lot of read routes down the field, Kurt, reading that safety. They would send their slot receiver, Ohio State would, and then they would read the middle of the field. He had to hold the football to get it to the intermediate and deep zones, and he did it as well as anybody in college football. And, and I understand there's some intrigue with all five of these quarterbacks, but when I looked at the college tape, I said, Justin Fields has the second best resume of all of these guys behind Trevor Lawrence. And so I'm with you. I believe that, yes, if you've got a system put in place and, and you want a guy that can manage things and make the right throws and make the right reads, maybe you go uh, with Jones. But to me, the bigger upside, without a doubt, is Justin Fields. Yep. I believe, Rich, they've got to go that direction. Boy, how exciting is this? With the 11th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the My Chicago Bears select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. That's a touchdown for Justin Fields. Justin Fields, quarterback. Fields able to thread it in the tightest of windows. Two-time Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. Justin Fields. So Bears fans and Justin Fields family after a wait of 10 picks. And the Bears are all excited. They went YOLO to try and get Russell Wilson. That did not work out. It is now Justin Fields who is their newest quarterback. Yeah, and this is a Bears team that needed to get more dynamic. They were one of the last in the league in terms of explosive plays. They were tied for 27th. This is explosiveness with Justin Fields with his arm and his legs. He's going to go big play hunting down the field. And as you'll see in the first plays from Justin Fields, the toughness and the competitiveness, this is all you need to see. Boom! That shot he takes in the Clemson game, and he follows it up with a touchdown and plays the best football game of his entire career in that playoff matchup against Clemson. How about the arm strength to be able to throw this back shoulder ball down the field? Small windows down here in the red zone. Anticipate it, let it rip from Justin Fields. Watch the ball jump out of his hand on a line. This is one of the prettiest throws you'll ever see. If you want to see arm strength, look at that one lofted up over the top. And the maneuver, the ability to maneuver within the pocket, eyes are always up. He's an athlete, but he's not looking to run. He's looking to move around and throw. Here he escapes, and he's able to make something out of nothing with his athleticism. This is, a, this is an exciting moment here for the Chicago Bears. This is a team that has a pretty good defense in place. They just didn't have any juice. There was no excitement on this offense. I think Justin Fields, I, I expect him to be out there week one. He's going to give this Chicago Bears team something they don't have. It's going to be a lot more fun to watch. I like the way you use the word juice because that might change this division a little bit now. With or Aaron Rodgers, we don't know. But the NFL player comp that I have presented by Jeep, for him, Dak Prescott. Uh -huh. Look at the body, look at the arm, the ability to move around, extend plays, and make plays. And not only that, both of them adapted so well. Dak coming out of college wasn't expected to have to take the reins right away. Tony Romo gets hurt. 
he has to become a starter as a rookie. Justin Fields transfers, adapts to a new system, takes his team to the college football playoffs, and competes for national championships. I like the toughness of both of them. I like their adaptability. I think this is great. This guy plays big in big games. Cold weather's not going to affect him. He's, he's, in Ohio, he's played in Ohio this past year, this past few years. This guy's got a chance to be special. But I want to give a special shout-out to Matt Nagy and his staff. They had a rough, rough year, and many of us have been in the NFL. And when you lose games like that in the middle of the year, those players pack it in. This team did not pack it in. They fought, they fought, they fought. Well, guess what? you got a quarterback coming that's going to give you the same kind of fight, the same kind of energy, the same kind of passion. This guy's 60 more touchdowns than interceptions. Is great. 60 more touchdowns and interceptions. That's this guy good, right? Yes, this guy That's takes good. care of the ball. He can run, he can throw it, and he's going to bring a lot of juice to that stadium. So uh, the Bears, stop me if you've heard this one before, have traded up all the way from all the way from 52 to 38, and uh, for that right, uh, Carolina gets a third and a sixth and flips a fifth back to Chicago. Peter Schrager. Bring it in. Rich, you know, the Bears originally were picking at 20. They did all these different mock draft exercises, and offensive linemen they liked were around at 20. Well, guess what? Here we are in the second round, and some of those guys are still on the board available. I would be shocked if it's not offensive line here for the Bears. Or actually, it's Rasheed Davis coming out here for the Bears. Bear down, bear down. Hey, who's that? Good to see you, bear down. Uh, the Carolina Panthers have traded the 39th pick to the Chicago Bears with the 39th pick in the 2000 or 21 NFL draft. The Chicago Bears select Tevin Jenkins, tackle, Oklahoma State. All right, you're going to give your young quarterback some help. That seems to be the theme. And this is, don't let the glasses that he wears fool you. This is a mauler brawler that has some nasty when you study him on that Oklahoma State tape. Watch him finish. This is against Joseph Osai. This is not only taking him off the field, he's going to park him underneath the bench and run a few people over on the way out there. He can climb up to linebackers with his athleticism, and once he latches on, he stays attached, does a really nice job at the second level. He can displace and create movement on down blocks, create some movement as he washes down the line of scrimmage, something you love to see from a right tackle. And then as a pass protector, just take him around. Just, just run him all the way around, stay attached, keep your hands in tight. He's a very good football player on tape. I thought this was about the sweet spot for him of where he would go. Again, showing you the ability in, in, as, in pass pro to just run him right around the edge. Against Oklahoma, showing you a little snatch move here with some quick hands. There was value today in offensive linemen. And I think we've seen a couple go, and I'm telling you, we're going to see about four or five more go. I'm anticipating the next 10 to 12 picks. When I was talking with Mike Gundy, uh, of o Oklahoma State, he said this guy had the athleticism and ability that a young Russell Okong had. And he obviously played at Oklahoma State, so high praise from his college coaches. He's a guy, again, that nasty demeanor. He can block in the run. He can do it in the pass. It's a good pick. Larry Borum of Missouri, the defensive tackle, just joined the Chicago Bears. What do you think of that pick, and what do you think the Broncos are going to do? Yeah, he's a big offensive tackle, Rich. He's, you know, 6'5", 320 pounds. He's a right tackle. He's got a real just wide, thick frame. Um, I thought more of kind of an absorb guy. In other words, when you're watching a tackle, is he getting on people? Is he, is he taking the action to them? He's more of kind of a catch and absorb. Um, but somebody I think does have kind of a starting potential. He's not there, but he's got potential down the line. The Bears did call Andy Dalton, did have a conversation with Dalton about potentially doing this about taking Justin Fields and he's a competitor obviously but it does sound like at least he understands I talked to Bears coach Matt Nagy a couple days ago about this pick and the main thing he wants is just like Schrager said he wants the Kansas City model so yes there's going to be pressure to win but their goal is to have Andy Dalton play the entire year have Fields develop under the radar and then pass the torch the following year well, he was my quarterback number two overall, and I spoke to a number of scouts who finally tell me their actual grades. He was quarterback one for about half of them, and I talked to 16, so that's eight. They got him at pick 11. So this is a guy who many believe, at least a quarter of the league, believe that was the best quarterback available, better than the guy who went number one. This is a guy who adds an element of a run game, the scrambling, five scrambling touchdowns, 630 scrambling yards. He adds the clean pocket, best passer situation with 54 touchdowns and just four interceptions from that clean pocket and the chance to develop and the chance to make Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace both be long-term, you know, job security situations for the Bears as well.
But we have enormous news, and you can see it on the lower left-hand corner of your screen. We have a trade, and Adam Schefter has the details. Shefty. Greeny, we have the Giants trading number 11 to the Chicago Bears. The Bears come up, presumably for a quarterback. The Giants get back in return. The Bears' first-round pick next year. They're five this year, and they're four next year. So you see the picks that they get back in addition to the one this year. Next year's one, five this year, four next year. The Bears are coming up. It looks like quarterback time again in Chicago, Greeny. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the reaction in Chicago is going to be remarkable. The draft parties in and around the city there because this is something that the Bears fans and the Bears team desperately needs. You see Mac Jones, he's available for them. Justin Fields is available for them. Booger, what are you thinking? I'm going Mac Jones because do they dare go down the same road as Mr. Trubisky, the dual threat guy with the athletic ability? They've seen that in Justin Fields. So do they go down that road or do you go with the guy that can play the position the old school way? Sit back and pick your part. May not have the athleticism. Are they gunshot from getting burned on Mitch Trubisky. Yeah, it just depends on which one you want. Obviously, Mac Jones brings a different skill set. He's a pocket passer who's tremendously smart, tremendously accurate. Justin Fields equally is adept in those areas. To me, I'm a Justin Fields guy. He was my second highest rated quarterback. Mac was my fourth highest rated quarterback. I'm going Justin Fields over Mac Jones. I think New England is interesting because who fits New England the best here? To me, it's Mac Jones. Mac Jones, you're right. And, you know, that's the fit there perfect for them. Chicago's now ahead of New England. What does New England do? Sit at 15, and do they like Justin Fields enough to take him? This pick impacts the Patriots and what they do at 15. Lewis, let's make sure everyone who is watching is aware of all of the pressure that exists right now on the general manager in Chicago, Ryan Pace, and the head coach, Matt Nagy. Look, I think I think we know how much pressure is on both of those, those two. <laughs> There's no question about that. I think this pick is going to have Matt Nagy, the head coach's fingerprints, all over it. All over it. In my estimation, that's who's making this pick. This is his evaluation. He evaluated the, the quarterback class that had Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson and Mitch Trubisky, and I know exactly how he liked those guys. I know how he had those guys ranked. This is his pick. If it's a quarterback, it's his pick because he knows it's here's his rear end that's on the line, and he's going to take his guy. So let's just see which one it is. Well, and based on their job security, you would think that this, this pick has to come and play really soon because yeah. th their job is on the line in Chicago, so this pick has got to be on the field in order to get this process started. It seems unfathomable they would have traded up to here not to take a quarterback. So it seems it, that way. We don't know what Roger Goodell is about to tell us, but it seems impossible, Mel, to imagine it will not be one of the two quarterbacks. I would have to think it's one of the two quarterbacks. You think about the Windy City, right? You think about Mac Jones, not the arm strength Justin Fields had. You think about Andy Dalton there without the great arm strength. You think about this whole organization about having the win now, giving up a one next year. All, so all those things I think go into this to see will it be Mac Jones or will it be Justin Fields? I think we're pretty much guaranteed it's going to be one of those two. Boy, how exciting is this? With the 11th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the My Chicago Bears select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. This is a founding franchise in the National Football League. In 1920, as the Decatur Staleys, they have waited that long for a great quarterback in Chicago. Will it be Justin Fields? He never lost a game in the Big Ten. He threw 63 touchdowns and ran for 15 more in his two years at Ohio State after transferring from Georgia. Threw six against Clemson in the playoff in January. When the Big Ten initially shut down for the 2020 season, he organized an online petition that got over 320,000 signatures. He wanted to play, and he was one of the players who needed it the least for his draft stock. Justin Fields has superstar potential. He's headed to Chicago, where they desperately need him. Mel Kuyper, let's go. Yeah, the Windy City, you need the big arm, and Justin Fields has the big arm. He's got tremendous ability with his legs to beat you. Think about number one player, along with Trevor Lawrence, one and one A coming out of high school, goes to Georgia, then he leaves. They've got Jake Fromm, you go to over to Ohio State, got all that pressure, and you respond to that. 2019, I think people forgot about 2019, how great he was. And then after everybody questioned him, what he did here against Ohio State, against Clemson with Ohio State with those Buckeyes, underdog, 
handling that Clemson Tiger defense effectively. In that game, you think about throwing for 385 yards, six touchdowns, and the one interception. First quarterback in Big Ten history, though, 40 touchdowns, rushed for 10 in a season, did that in 2019. Yeah, he had to speed things up a bit, but you're talking about a kid who did it in 2019 at an elite level, and this year, in a COVID year, with all the interruptions, didn't have Chris Olave against Northwestern yet, still won that game, still did beat Indiana, so he had two subpar games in two years at Ohio State. Is that enough to push him down this far? I didn't think so. The Bears are taking a quarterback similar to the ones they passed on not that long ago in Mahomes and Watson. You know, what you look at, you're getting the best of both worlds. You're getting a guy that can complete 70% of the balls from the pocket, but he also ran 4-4 in the 40. But it's, it's going to be up to Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace to get this young man ready because they're drafting him to save their job. And if he's going to save their job, he's got to be on the field. So you got to get him ready to play and get him ready to play soon. This is not a project that we're saying, hey, this is going to be Alex Smith, Patrick Mahomes. We'll see you like in week 15. This young man has got to play and play soon. He's not ready now, so how fast they can get him ready to play, that's going to be key. Yeah, look, this is this is Matt Nagy to a T right here. This yeah. is his fingerprints are on this. I can picture what he's thinking here that he has here. I know that he really likes Sean Watson. But he sees a lot of the same things in Justin Fields. He's going to have to continue to develop his dropback game and make sure on third down he gets that process speed sped up to the point where it's like, boom, the ball is out and we're moving. And if it's not out, take off and run. Use that God-given ability and just pick up first downs and move this football and help us score points. If you're Allen Robinson right now, you're going, <laughs> hallelujah. If you're Darnell Mooney, you're going, thank you. This is what we needed. If you're David Montgomery, if you're the offensive line, the city of Chicago, you guys should be out in the streets just dancing and having a good time because you know what this your head coach now has said this is my guy this is what I'm going to develop trust me I think I know what I'm doing as far as evaluating quarterbacks and bringing in youngsters we did it down there in Kansas City let's just see if we can recreate it here we've had another trade so I, I just want to clear up for anyone who's watching and saying why did say Bears on the screen it is because the Bears have traded up to this spot and they have made their you. selection so let's see who Chicago has come up to get Bear down, bear down. Hey, who is that? Good to see you, bear down. Uh, the Carolina Panthers have traded the 39th pick to the Chicago Bears with the 39th pick in the 2000 or 21 NFL draft. The Chicago Bears select Tevin Jenkins, tackle, Oklahoma State. He's a really good player. Tevin Jenkins is the first lineman from Oklahoma State drafted since Russell Okung in 2010. He was a full-time starter at right tackle for three seasons. He played baseball and basketball in high school in Topeka, Kansas. And, and Mel, he plays with an edge in a very good way. I tell you, I, I thought he could be a first-round pick. I thought he could go to the Bears at pick number 20 when they had that pick originally, and nobody would have argued with that selection. You look about it in 2019, he also started three games at left tackle. We forget about that. Part of an offensive line that paved the way for Chuba Hubbard to lead the FBS in rushing yards. Along with football, he also played basketball and baseball in high school. Drive blocker, strong hands, good finishing ability and pass protection. The footwork, the hand usage, Pretty good. Now, you, know, you look at him, and sometimes those quick guys might give him a little bit of trouble. But overall, I thought he kept defensive ends at bay on a consistent basis. Both impressed with Tevin Jenkins week after week. A couple of times, he had some coverage sacks were allowed, where the quarterback maybe rolled and a guy got away from him. That resulted in the sack was nothing against Tevin Jenkins. He wasn't beaten initially. Like I said, he was one of the guys, the five or six guys you thought could have been and maybe should have been a first-round draft choice. When your name's called, as it was for Larry Borum by the Bears, it's a magical moment. Yeah, this guy's gotten better and better, and he's shown versatility. Two-year starter at Missouri. Started out at, at a lot of different spots. He's played right tackle, both guard spots, and left tackle. He's a right tackle or guard in the NFL. He's 6'4 and a half, 322 pounds. He actually ran better than I thought at 5'1 range at his pro day. He doesn't have the longest arms, and I think that's why he kicks inside the guard in the NFL. But he is strong and powerful. I love his punch. His that six-inch punch when he just latches on to defenders or in pass protection. He knocks guys back. I'm really impressed with Borum in that regard. Limited athlete. He's going to have to keep working on his footwork. But again, inside a guard, I think he's going to be a really good fit and a starter in the NFL. Opening up some running lanes here for Larry Roundtree. Yes. Running back to Missouri, we plan to see taken somewhere today, maybe in the fifth, sixth, seventh round area.
you see here with these picks right now. The Chicago Bears, as much as they needed to figure out the quarterback position, the offensive line let them down last year. They had no toughness up front whatsoever. Couldn't capture the line of scrimmage whatsoever. Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace were determined to get some people who are going to – they may not be the most technically sound right now, but they need tough people up front and because they had no shot without it last year. And these are two of the most powerful offensive linemen in the class. Jenkins isn't a great athlete, but he is your classic right tackle. And I, Borum's going to come in and he's going to punch you in the mouth. I promise you, offensive line coach Juan Castillo, that's the first thing he's going to tell him. No doubt. Before you even talk to me about technique, move some people off the line yeah. of scrimmage. Because we couldn't do it last year. And it shut everything down from there. It shut everything down. Watch them on Monday night against the Minnesota Vikings, just get killed. Quarterbacks had no shot. Yeah. So they got to take care of that position. So the Bears score a huge win here by getting him at 11 and building the offense around him. Opened up because of Denver. Passing on yep. Justin Fields, going moving forward with Drew Locke. And you got a Teddy Bridgewater there as well in Denver. But I think you think about where Justin Fields is in the division. And I'm all about that in the NFL. That's just an unusual thing, but Khalil Herbert Put out to numbers. To that. He was top 10. You didn't have to. I just thanks. I thought people might find that interesting. Uh, top 10 in the nation in his past year. You see him here playing for Kansas. He put those numbers up at Virginia Tech. He really did. I think this year was his most productive at the collegiate level. Over 1,100 yards rushing. Average 7-7 seven, seven a carry with eight touchdowns. Had some impressive individual performances against Duke with 207 yards. 357 all-purpose yards in that game. What really gets your attention is once through the hole, he's a threat to rip off a long run. Runs with good vision, nice balance, can run around or through a tackler and he has kick return ability so he has the ability to help out on special teams he's a work in progress as far as the passing game is concerned but when you look at Khalil Herbert all he's done is produce solid results and I think the ability on special teams early on could figure to push him on that NFL roster. Two career fumbles yeah. his entire career he's going to protect the football he runs with toughness got to improve his pass protection but that's the guy right there that you like to work with again another late round pick and, and that the wore, value matches up. He wore Frank Beamer's number 25 because of the special teams ability. The Chicago Bears taking the wide receiver. Very productive for North Carolina last year, Daz Newsom. Yeah, I think De'Ami Brown stole the, the show in terms of getting the attention. Michael Carter in the backfield with Javante Williams. And all you saw was Daz Newsom being the guy that Sam Howell relied on in critical situations. He's also an outstanding punt returner, but as a receiver, like as a run after the catch ability, he attacks the ball at times. I like to see him do it a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. I think when you look at him, rather than letting the ball get into his body, which has been an issue at times with Daz yep. Newsom, but when you look at his punt return ability, average 9.9 .9 yards per punt return, led the ACC in 2020, had a big year in 2019 as well, tied for the most touchdown receptions of 20 plus yards with six. So I think when you look at Daz Newsome, you think about a guy who plays above and beyond his computer numbers, Todd, and I love the fact that he's a really good, solid, experienced punt returner. I thought he was silky smooth when I watched him. You know, he's just such a smooth mover, and, and he, does a, he does a really good job with his vision in the open field. He's not the fastest guy, he's got quickness, but he knows when to set up defenders and how to make that cut and when to make the cut.